Hello, 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 beautiful souls. Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Hey, Butterscotch Chick, I see you. Hey, Gloria, Charles, I see you. How are you guys doing? I hope you're having the most amazing week. So as usual, you know, I love to have a dialogue. And today, how are you, my darling? I hope all is well. I am giving you guys a treat as promised. You know, I always keep my promises. It's getting close to the holidays. So I am getting ready to share to all, especially all my loyal friends who've been coming on with me every Wednesday. You guys have been here with me throughout my highs and my lows and I really appreciate it. I appreciate that you are very, very patient as well. Yeah, I know, I, I understand how it goes. Well, thanks to the sneaking, it's, it's nice to feel your vibes. I am live on Instagram as well, y'all. And uh, for those of you who are there, please go ahead and help me to spread the word, share, share, share. Um, for those of you who don't know me, let me properly introduce myself. My name is Paula D'Souza. I have been navigating the beauty industry for over two decades as a makeup artist and I don't just see myself as an as an artist. I what I do is I help women to connect or reconnect with their inner beauty through using um, makeup to enhance what is already naturally there. So um, today I am here to share with you from one of my um, master classes, understanding the art of makeup. And we are all navigating this season where every time we dress up to go out or whether it's to go to work, we have to have a mask as our tire now. So what a lot of my clients have been asking is for beauty tips to show how to do um, simple dress up looks because of course you would discover by now wearing a mask is not um, the most comfortable thing especially when you're wearing makeup because it tends to smear and smudge but of course you know by now well, some of you may know that there are um, no transfer products that you can wear either well both on your lips as well as your complexion so I am going to give a few more seconds. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate that you share your most valuable uh, asset with me. Yes, mask and lip gloss are terrible. It's uh, a friend of mine is saying that it smears everywhere. So what I try to do for myself, because one of the things that I noted is wearing a mask with our recycled um, air that we're breathing in and out. What it does, it has a tendency to make your lips extra dry. So one of the things that I recommend is for you to always be armed with a lip balm or a lip moisturizer, whatever it is you use to keep your lips moist and keep reapplying. And also make sure you always have water. Take a couple of sips of water in between uh, whenever you can, but make sure that your lips are moisturized. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered, um, I think it's about a couple of years ago, maybe not yet, maybe two years, I should say two, three years now, as soon as they brought it out, Maybelline have this product called um, Liquid Matte Ink, I think is the name. I'm gonna get the exact thing. It is the only lip product that I have used that I could safely say um, when it comes to applying, um, still wearing lipstick when you have to go out, that is the perfect product. One of the things that I love most about it, unfortunately, I don't have one here with me to show you what it looks like. But it's a product by Maybelline, it's called Liquid Matte Ink. What I love about it, it's loaded with moisturizers because um, you know I'm big on, on skincare and anything that cures for your skin, I really do love it. Oh, well, thank God for you. I am so grateful to hear that. One of my friends who's based, um, I don't think she may want to see her, where she lives, she lives in the US and um, she's saying where she lives she doesn't have to wear a mask in public and that is so awesome so i haven't tried um, a lot of the lip stains but of course a lip stain would be great because it stains your lip it doesn't have anything there to to remove and i will also do a demonstration for you she, she's in dallas texas and so you don't have to um, wear a, a mask out in public 
So one of the things that I will do today, I'm going to do two things. I, I'm telling you about the liquid matte ink, and I'm going to show you how to stain your lips using a lipstick because I know. So today, this, this demo is all about the, I don't want to say average because I don't really think of you uh, as average, but let, let me say the everyday woman who feel, oh, because these are makeup artists, you could get it perfect. I am going to break it down as simple as simply can so you could get it. I'm going to keep everything simple so that you understand. But I have to tell you a couple of things. Um, one of the things that I want you to do, uh, for those of you who are on Facebook, I would love if you can um, go ahead and ask me some questions in related, anything to do in relation to makeup and skincare. Yes, Gloria, that's the one that you bought for your birthday. Um, I don't know. Tell me about your experience with it. How how how, how was your experience? Have you worn it a lot? Did you like it? Did it smudge? Because once you put it on properly, it does not smudge. And what I love about it is when you're eating or drinking or sipping, it doesn't get that weird kind of gooey feeling on your lips, like most lip products. So that is one of the things I, tore, I thoroughly enjoy about wearing liquid matte ink. And of course, um, the lip stains are a great way too because you can also moisturize your lips in between. Because if you're gonna go to an event, I'm sure that you know if you're maybe sitting to have dinner or something, you'll be able to take. You have to take your mask off. So that's the opportunity that I will take to kind of like re-moisturize my lips. So um, on that note, I think I want to say one second. I think I want to take this opportunity as well to wish some of my favorite people happy birthday. I had about four people who I know very personally um, who celebrated their birthday yesterday. Oh, great. So Gloria just confirmed that it's not messy, not even a mask. So I give you a good recommendation. So I'm so happy to hear that you've had that experience because I remember the first, my first experience with it, I ate a sandwich and that stuff did not move it stayed put and it did not get weird on me after a while so um so here's a couple of things if you have your notes before going because you know me i'm a teacher i like to be thorough i am not gonna just pop on here and do a demonstration then you have no clue because my face is totally different from yours my skin type is also different from yours so um if you have your notepad and a pen just grab it. I'm going to share a few simple tips. You may want to write this down or what you can do is save the live and then you could go back over it at your leisure. So in the meantime, please share, share, share. So happy birthday to Rachel. Happy birthday to Sonia. Happy birthday to Sherry. And happy birthday to one more person who, oh, happy birthday to Karen as well. She celebrated her birthday on the 22nd. Amma celebrated her birthday on the 22nd. So there's a whole bunch of Sagittarius people that I have. I think Sagittarius and Sagittarius that I have close to me. And they're really all awesome in their own individual individual rights. So I hope you guys have the most amazing birthday. And if anybody on the live is celebrating their birthdays or anniversary today, I would love to say um, happy birthday to you as well. I know Whitney, you're coming up soon. I know you can't wait, eh? yes so happy birthday in advance to my lovely beautiful Whitney it is so awesome when you had the privilege of watching a child grow up from a baby into a woman into a man it's just like whoa because this little young lady here I have held her as a baby and now she's a grown woman in, a, in um is it 30 you're gonna be 30 or 31 anyways and I think it's you hitting 30. so Understanding the art of makeup and you, of course, you know, oh, wow, 32 already. Oh, my Lord. Hey, Sonia, good afternoon. I hope you had an amazing birthday yesterday. So, yes. So if you've been following me for a while, one of the things that you know I am very big on and I don't compromise is skincare. So it really is all about the skin. And here's a few things that I want you to know. Your foundation, your concealer, your powder your blush, highlighter, your bronzer, and contouring. These are all about your complexion. So when you hear me refer to complexion products, this is what I'm talking about. 
So it falls into the category of foundation, a concealer, your powder, your blush, your highlighter, your bronzer, and contouring. Anything you do into the skin, the face, is referred to as your complexion products. So the purpose for the complexion products is two things. One, hey, David, how are you? Hello, my brother. It's so good to see you. I know you're just popping by. Thanks to the love. I really appreciate it. So today I'm teaching about um, makeup. I'm teaching the everyday woman who want to learn how to look flawless, but don't need to go through all that stuff that a professional makeup artist is doing. I believe in being practical. I'm not going to teach a woman who's not a makeup artist. I'm not going to teach her the way how I would do makeup. I will break it down to be very simple so you could understand and you could comprehend. And as you get comfortable with the simple, then I will increase it to maybe a little bit more technical. So the purpose for your complexion products are two for two reasons. One um, is to create the illusion of flawless skin um, using your foundation, your concealer, and your powder, as well as and then your highlighters or your, and your bronzers. What that also does, it creates the illusion of um, a dewy complexion because some people's complexion is very dull and dry. So if you're not doing, um, you're not involved in a very consistent skincare routine for your skin type one of the things that can happen is your complexion can look very dull so you need to make sure that you're exfoliating on a regular because skin is a living organ it is the most important organ on the outside because it protects every single thing on the inside so for me personally i believe that my skin is supposed to get the best treatment so when it comes to skincare i try my best not to skim um it's like uh i'm going through a little challenging time right now because of course i can't have i don't have access to all the products that i would like to use on my skin so i'm improvising here and there so and i think it's a good thing for me as well because i'm able to tell you um as a woman who working and managing all these different things and you think that skincare is not important it really really is so when it comes to um getting the basics i would recommend you get um you because right now they have um facial washes that have like scrubs in them it's a scrub and a facial wash in one so get one of those and get a good moisturizer those are the two things as a matter of fact three things i try my best not to do without is the micellar water because the micellar water helps to lift whether you're wearing makeup or not skincare have nothing to do with makeup skincare is all about making sure that your skin it's cleansed from its own natural buildup. Every single day, whether you're you're in the air conditioning or if you're outside of um, in the atmosphere, your skin is exposed to the elements. Your skin also produces natural oils, and what happens from time to time, it builds up into your pore. So if you don't cleanse on a regular, your complexion could end up looking dull and dry, and some people will develop um, blackheads and whiteheads. So it's important for you to clean your skin clean your pores so your skin is always the first thing in the morning, last thing at night. It's not a big deal, include it in your bath routine. So when it comes to um, you highlighting and contouring, one of the things that I learned about that is um, light colors bring forward, dark colors recede. So um, what you need to know about that is this, your highlighter and your contour colors, your light and your dark, the contrast of those two colors will help to shape your face. So blush, contour, um, bronzer, or whatever, however you want to refer to it as, it serves the purpose to help to define your facial shape. So be, I believe if you understand what you're doing, what what product is for, uh, for what reason, it really helps to put you in a place where you understand better what you are doing. The other thing that is a very important when it comes to this is to understand, let's say three things first, Understand, understand what your skin type is, especially not just for, for your skincare products, but also for your complexion products. Because let's say, for example, you have very oily skin, don't go using a foundation that's, that was formulated for dry skin. What is going to happen is going to make your skin more oily. So it's important for you to choose every single complexion product, whether it's your skincare or your complexion products, make sure it's for your skin type. The other thing that you need to know when it comes to um, your complexion is to ensure 
that you are using uh, um, complexion products that will blend with your undertones. It's important for you to know your skin type and it's important for you to know your undertone. When I say undertone, whether your skin is yellow or if it has yellow underneath, if it has red, if it has green, if it has purple, but I don't know if people have purple, but darker skin tones tend to be more on the reddish purple side, depends on how dark your complexion is. And it's important for your, on the undertones of the product should definitely be either warmer or cooler or neutral. It will make a huge difference, especially in your, in your photos, because if you want to have um, the illusion of really flawless skin, then the way to apply makeup is not to make it look like a mask. That is the, the trick to it. Less is more. And especially when you wear a mask, you don't want to take off your mask when you have foundation all over, start moving and shifting. It will just be a hot mess. So, um, all right. And the other important thing now, since you're going to be in a mask and this part of your face is covered, the emphasis is on your eyes. So the one thing that I recommend is to, is two things. One, get your brows shaped professionally. I have a brow clientele. I think I do an amazing job. I don't know if anybody out there will testify. I do an amazing job at shaping the brow and I've recently been introduced to tinting. And what a brow tint does, it eliminates you from having to fill in your brow as well. So what brow tinting is, if, in case if you don't know, it really is like a dye for your eyebrow. You, um, the one that I use is very simple because I try to go more with the natural products. All I do is add some water, mix it up into a cream, apply it, leave it on for like about 25 to 30 minutes. And then your brows tend to have a nice, more de defined shape. So when you're ready to go out now, um, all you need to do is probably just enhance the shape. The other thing that I would definitely want you to know when it comes to um, shaping your brow, and I don't think most women understand that, and this is very, very imperative that you do, brow shaping has absolutely nothing to do with making your brows darker. So that's the first thing you need to know. It's not about making your brows um, darker. It really is about defining and enhancing your natural brow shape. I was told, and I mean, I could still hear in my head up to now, eyebrows are the most important feature on the face. It frames your eyes and it adds expression. So that's why you see sometimes some people end up with this surprise look permanently because um, first of all, they did not have the privilege of getting their brow shape properly and they don't understand how to enhance the brow shape to, end, to just, you know, soften and define their overall look. So it's all about the eyes. Um, one other thing to do with your eye, your eye makeup, um, using whether you choose to use a mascara or you choose to use eyelashes. When it comes to mascara, uh, the darker your skin tone, make sure that the, the mascara is like the darkest black that you could find. Because what, are, what a lot of people don't know, not all black mascaras are black. Some of them are charcoal and the charcoal have a kind of grayish finish. So if you're going to do something like a smoky eye, when you apply that mascara, it's going to make your lashes stand out because it's not going to be black. It will look kind of grayish. So try to find a mascara that is, first of all, volumizing and lengthening because maybe two coats of mascara, you really don't need um, eyelash extensions. And also, it depends if you're going to something that fancy, you want to get all fancy dancy, then you could um, use, a, use lash extensions. But the thing that I want to tell you about lash extensions is there are so many different types of lash extensions out there. And the whole purpose behind eyelash extensions, it should enhance the look. There are several different types of lashes. And what um, what it does, what the way how I use it, I try to keep my eye makeup very simple because the one way, the fastest way to age you is by dumping too much eye product on yourself. When I say dumping too much eye product, a lot of people, what I've been seeing now on social media, they paste on this whole bunch of, um, whether it's foundation or concealer, but it looked like if it could do about on one eye, 
could probably do about six people. That's to show you how, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm sure many of you would have observed it. It is just too much. So when you apply a thick coat of eye product, and then you're gonna put on a um, eye primer, and then you're gonna put on more primer because you want to cut crease, and then you're gonna put on another layer, and another layer, and another layer. What ends up happening is the eyes tend to look very heavy. And we don't want heavy eyes. So this is a season where it's all about effortless beauty. It's all about the whole less is more kind of vibe because you really, really do not need a whole lot to look fabulous. So on that note, if there are any questions for me, I would love for you to um, to hit me up in the comment section so let me know if there's any questions. And um, I am planning to do two types of smoky eyes so you can see the difference. Is there anything in particular that you would like me to do? Is So don't just sit there. It's not a... I think we just sitting and watching. I want you to participate, engage me. So engage me and ask me questions. Tell me what your thoughts are about what I said. I said a whole bunch of stuff and nobody asked any questions yet. So I didn't know that this class was shy. So what I'm doing right now is I am, I just put a little bit of, I don't really use a concealer. Because you remember, these days, it's all about timing is so important. Nobody wants to spend three, four hours getting the makeup done. So I try to keep it simple. Make sure that your skincare um, game is on your game is on point. And, uh, oh, great. One of the things, I'm glad you said um, you asked about that, Sonia, because here's the thing about um, contouring, especially on darker skin tones. You don't need to contour, you know. All you need is a shade of a foundation that is lighter and the right shade of blush on darker skin tones. So um, that is one thing that I learned in my master class um, with, uh, what's her name again? Manifa Mortis. We don't need, we don't need a, a contour product for darker skin tones because your skin is already dark. So what could end up happening is you're going to use a dark product and it could end up looking muddy in your skin. So the best way to tackle a dark skin tone is by just going with your product that is lighter and use your blush because blushing also helps to shape the face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to contour one side of my face and then I'm going to use my blush on the other side. So as you know, I always say, before you even start, identify the areas of your skin where you think need a little bit extra work. And for me, my area is like right in my inner corner. I have a little shadow there, especially since I am up late at night and always reading or whatever, my eyes are tired. And then also the eyes is the thinnest area over on the face. So it always tends to look shadowy. So what I usually do is tackle this area first. And once I tackle this area, it's like three quarters of my work is done. And the residue, I put it on top of my eyelid because this will come like a, a base. And I am on purpose not using a brush. And I don't use a sponge because what a sponge does, it soaks up too much of the product. I do use it at the end because I use it as a finishing tool. My Beauty Blender, I use it as a finishing tool. So this will help to kind of pull everything out. So what I did on my hands is I mixed two products together. A lighter foundation and one that is exactly my skin type. And that's what I'm using first. How are you guys doing out there? How was your week so far? So yeah, my hand is working, but you can engage me, ask questions. If any of you have your makeup in front of you and you want, oops, and you would like me to see anything, let me know. I could always send you the link. 
and I will bring you on screen so I can see exactly what you're doing. So this is the first, my first step. I have some discoloration on the side of my forehead. Uh, what I usually do these days when I'm going out, instead of wearing a mask, I wear a face shield. Unless I'm going to a space where it's absolutely mandatory that I wear a mask, I, I usually try my best to stay out of that. All right. So since we're focusing on eyes, I'm going to go straight into, straight into doing one side. So since you also have no request me, I'll just do what I want because everybody out there y'all shy. So let me know what is the look that you really would like to learn how to master or to understand when it comes to eye makeup. If I don't see anything in five seconds, I will just go ahead and do what I plan to do. All right. So I don't have all my glasses, but I can still see if a question pops up. So what I just did is I, I apply a little bit more of my foundation slash concealer because all I do rather than have um, foundation concealer by itself, what I try to do is I use two shades of foundation. One that is one shade lighter than my skin tone and the other one that is exactly my skin tone. So that way, to me, I don't need a concealer. If I'm selling you product, I would definitely sell you a concealer. <laughs> but today, I'm not a um, today I'm not a, a brand ambassador. Today, I'm a, I'm a woman who's showing you how to do your makeup with the least amount of product needed. Oh, Gloria, you're taking notes. Okay, cool. All right, so basically this is my first thingy. And one of the things that I discovered over the last maybe year or two, since life is just so, 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 so simple, I learned that the fastest way to get something done is to use your fingers. Um, one of the things that I also wanna share Oh, something with sweaty face. What do you mean sweaty face? Like, uh, you, you perspire a lot. Is that what you mean? Because I don't know what a sweaty face is. If you're perspiring a lot, that's a whole different scenario. Um, so I would love for you to clarify that, please. Great, so what I'm going to do is, I love this contouring palette, it's kind of going through now, so I don't know what, sweaty and oily is two different things. If you have a, or, perspire, or, or you perspire a lot, um, if you perspire a lot, they have nothing you can do about that, you know. Um, in terms of, you just need to use a product that is, resistant to water and try to stay cool because I don't know what I could recommend for as you say sweaty face yes Dawn I'm so glad you're here because this is you're one of the people who who I thought about when I was doing this and I'm doing my best to really show you how very simple it is and, and the first thing is really your skincare routine. Making sure that your skin by itself is literally flawless. And when you choose to wear makeup, you just enhance it. So all I've done so far is use a little bit of foundation in my area that is my, what I refer to as my trouble area. And um, I put some powder there because I use the foundation over my eyes and this will serve as a primer 
So the other thing that I wanted to say in terms of eye makeup, I do make, I do everything intentionally. And one of the things that I learned over the years is that um, yeah, I, colors that you use on your skin enhances your skin tone. The colors that you use it, that you use on your eyes will enhance the color of your iris. So if you have light brown eyes and you know what shade of browns and purples and whites to use, it will help to enhance your eye color, make it looks make it look even lighter. So you need to develop an intimate relationship with yourself when you're doing your makeup. Observe. The other thing I also want to bring to your attention when it comes to especially eyeshadow is watch out for the texture of the product that you're going to use. Now, I'm not trying to diss anybody when I say this. What I'm um, about to say is that when you choose to buy cheap products, you will get cheap results because some of the colors look very pigmented in the packaging. And when you apply it on you, it just have this washout finish. So you don't want to use the generic, generic cheap made in China eyeshadow palettes that one of well, first first of all it's not gonna be good for your skin especially around your eyes because a lot of women end up with very dark eyelids and that's because of the product the whatever ingredients in the product that they're using it tend to discolor your eyelid so be very very intentional with what you're going to put on your skin the skin absorb absorb chemicals and i try my best not to use anything that is going to have too many chemicals in it so today I'm going to work with this naked palette, right? And I'm going to do a smoky eye. And from, from my observation, there's there are a few colors that really look good on me. First of all, certain shades of browns, certain shades of greens. And when you're doing a smoky eye, it don't necessarily mean that you have to go with black. So you could start with, a, with the darkest color. And what I'm doing is simply... Normally, I would say my ring finger, but I'm going to use my middle finger and I dab it in the product because of the texture of this particular product, it's kind of very silky. And what I will do is tap this over my entire eyelid. I start in the middle and all I'm doing is tapping. I hope Dawn is still there because she is, you're the first person who's there. Oh, you could do it because you're a makeup artist. I'm a woman today. And I'm showing you a simple, simple, simple way. So what I usually do, I get technical too so that you can understand. The part where the placement is also very important. And the placement right now that I'm doing is from my lash line all the way up to, if you could feel the top of your eye wall, that is where your natural crease is. And that is where I am stopping with this. So I'm going to put a little bit more, just to intensify it. Starting from the middle. So by the time I get to the outer corner and the inner corner, it's blended out. I start from the bottom. So by the time I get to the area where I want to stop, which is my crease on top of where my eyeball sinks, it's already blended more or less you see that no harsh lines but what i will do is i will go in with my um blending brush in a little bit and i will do something totally different so i'll do one eye first and then i'm going to do something totally different on the other side so now um when it comes to I like to keep it really simple. So this is a regular Q-tip. I'm going to pass this swab on the inside. And the other thing about applying certain types of foundation with your finger, it helps with the fallouts. So I'm going to kind of slightly look down and I'm going to pass this swab underneath my bottom lashes all the way over to the center of my iris. I'm going to tell you about that in a little while. So I'm not bringing it all the way up into the corner because my eyes is already small. If you have very full eyes, then I could say you could shadow the dark all the way over because you're going to want to create the illusion of a smaller eye. But my eyes are small already. So what I will do, I want to 
create the illusion of a bigger eye. So this is what I usually, how I teach in terms of when I do my classes, I divide the eyes in three sections. Your lash line to your crease, which is the top of the ball of the eye. And then you have your brow bone area. And in between your brow bone area and the crease, there's a little area like right here. This area, I refer to it as prime property. Then I'm going to tell you why. Or maybe you should ask me why if you want to know. I'm not going to just tell you everything. I'm going to do you like what everybody else do. Because you're not asking me questions. Today, I want to interact with you. So shoot me with your questions, all right? So um, not with a gun. Anyways, so look straight ahead when you look in the mirror. And you have the area over your iris. You have the inner corner. So the inner corner to the first part of the iris. That's one area. Then you have over the iris. And then you have the outer corner to where the first edge of the iris is. So for me, my area that I like to keep light is I swap the bottom right up to a little past the first edge, the edge of the iris. So that way, my eyes will definitely be have that smoky, sultry look, but it will still not look like I'm sleeping, if you know what I mean. So... I went in with one shade of brown and what I'm going to do now, I'm going in with another shade of brown that's a little bit more warm and I want to place it right on the top of the crease so I could blend it out and just fluff it out. So I'm going to do my brows real quick so that you could get um, a little bit of perspective. And I usually use two shades of brown. This NYX pencil is my favorite because it has this really nice, slim, sexy point. And it's perfect for feathering, feathering in my brow. So I will try to, because I don't have a lot of eyebrows, the first thing I do is create the shape that I want. So I more or less already wing out the bottom. And then I'm gonna go on top and define, define my arch. What I love about this, this is a nice warm shade. So the warmer the brown, it's the nicer it looks in person as well as the nicer it photographs as well too. So everything is about, for me personally, everything is about being natural, even in my artistry. The only time I do harsh brows is if I'm doing um, stage. But more or less, the softer the brow, the brow, the brow area is the more feminine you appear. So because I have literally very, very thin hairs, I have to go in in between. But for those of you who have very full brows and your brow hairs are thick, I will just focus on shape rather than filling it in. So basically that is it for me. You know, I could make it a little bit more deeper on certain occasions because I do that. I switch it up sometimes. There's another shade of brown that I would pop in between her to give it some more depth, but I'm not going to go there today. So the next thing I will do is highlight my brow bow area and I will just pull the smoky finish together so that you can see. And uh, what I'm going to do, so for all my friends who feel that they could um, throw in a thing at one particular person who's on here, you don't use one brush with every color. Try to keep your light brushes in your light product and your dark brushes in the darker ones because what will end up happening is your eye makeup will come out muddy. And I know that if she, and I, I think she, she kind of shy, so she gonna testify. Right. 
So yes, you can use a concealer to define the brow shape, but your eyeshadow, which is a, this is a, let me show you which one I used. I used this one. It, um, it looks kind of white, but what it is, is a kind of like a deep beige color. And it's just a little bit, it's a little bit deeper than my, um, lighter than my skin tone. So I am very, very strategic with how I use product. So I will go in right here and I will pull this over under my brow bone and this helps with the definition. And what it also does, if I'm taking pictures, there is no ugly flashback. So this is how I'm gonna pull the smoke together. Remember I said earlier, you don't necessarily have to use black to do a smoky eye. I choose brown. But I, I, st I want it to be a little bit more intense, a little bit more sexy. So what I can do now is two things. I could go in with a very, very black pencil and just do the lash line. Or I could use a very, very black, um, a deeper shade of brown and just kind of pull it together. Either which way, it is only to be kept to the lash line area and not all over the face the space so i go in with the medium tone and then i go and the light and then i go in with the darker color i don't know if there's if you guys understand if there's anything that i can clarify as we go along please please do so and on the other side i'm going to do a different style of smoky so you can see and this is a great way to pop your eyes while you're wearing a mask so let me see it's been a while since i use a pencil uh do i have any i'm just gonna go with that. so who's there are you guys still there i'm not getting any feedback am i here alone so i'm gonna use this black here i'm gonna use this shade of black right and i will use this brush because you see how flat it is at the top it's flat so i'll be able to use it as an eyeliner if i'm going to a party there's a product that i could use just to sweep in and it will come out like um it will it will come out and it will stay it operate like a waterproof scenario so I always pat off the excess because one of the things when you're working with dark shades, it easily can become very messy. So don't be too hard because I see what I'm going to do. Swoop, 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 swoop. Don't be too hard. Take your time. I dip the top of the brush. Let me show you. It's all about strategy. So this is the brush here. I dipped it like this and just swaddle it in the product. Let me show you on here. Swaddle it in the product. And then what I do is hold it like so and just stop off the excess. So this way I have very little fallouts. And this strategy is to take it in between my lash lines. So what I will do is just wriggle it in between my lash line. And this is going to add the depth that I want. I'm not going to bring it all over. I'm just going to take it up to the middle of my, my iris okay and then i'm going to do the same thing on top and what this also does if you're going to wear eyelash extensions it creates a depth closer to the lash line and it gives the illusion of fuller eyebrow eyelashes sorry so if you're going to just wear a volumizing mascara um it gives the eye the, the, the lash line area it gives it a little bit more depth if you're going to wear a pair of strips and you make a mistake and you don't get it as close to your lash line, the shadow of the darkness will disguise the space in between. I, I am one of those people who is my pet peeve. I really, really don't like to see that space between the lashes, the lash extension and your lash. It looks really, really ugly. So get this color. You could use a, a, a pencil as well, but I'm choosing to use the shadow. It does the same thing. I don't need to use a pencil and still eye, eye 
shadow at the same time. So one hour, because remember we're talking about time. And what I've done here, apart from taking it across my lash line, I don't know if you can see. Apart from taking it across my lash line, on the outer edge, remember we spoke about the tree? On the outer edge, the first third, I'm just patting it like right here. I don't want it to come all the way up there. So I want to do the deep, the deeper, the deep and a slightly lighter shade of brown to kind of like give a little bit of a highlight and then um, the, the highlight of the brow area. So you notice how it intensifies and it already gives you that really nice smoky finish. So this for me is definitely done. What I'm going to do now is what will pull this together, make it more sexy, is the lashes that I'm going to put on. So I will, I always recommend that you sweep a coat of very black mascara and try to get it from the root all the way up to the tip because don't tell yourself because you're putting on a pair of lashes you don't have to pull anything because the worst thing is if you have a very dark pair of lashes and you just put it on just like so without putting on some mascara that shit just looks so ugly because most of the times even with professional makeup artists i've seen people bragging that they had this makeup done professionally and I could see that shit saying hello, hi at me, and it annoys the crap out of me. So make sure that you apply a coat of mascara from the root all the way up to the tip of your brows. So when you apply the lashes, everybody's one big happy family. Ain't nobody got to know. And don't go for the cheap shiny lashes that can be all the way out there in your face. There are lash extensions that are very natural in terms of the texture that they're, that they're made with, as well as the quality of the hair. It mimics your natural lash hair. So even if you wear, because I'm going to put on a pair that is very dramatic, but it still ain't going to be ugly in your face, right? So I apply a coat and a little bit more and make sure, because I like to pop my eyes. So I always apply mascara to the bottom as well. And this mascara is pretty decent um i put on the first coat and then um so now i have to play abna babna abc because the other thing that will pull the smoky look together for me is like i said the style of the lash i can use I will use one of these because what I like about these are my reusables and what I love about this particular thing is from the Kiss Feather Lash family. I could go shower, I could wash this shit and it's going to be as good as new. I use a spoolie brush and I brush it out and it will be good as new. So my thing is I'm going to use this, but shoot, I didn't keep my, um, I didn't keep my pile of lashes close to me to show you the difference because if you go with something that the hair is lighter than this, it will not, the smoky would not pop as fabulous as if you go ahead and use something that is nice and deep. Yes, oh my gosh, you and I have the same pet peeve. It does look very, very awful. So I think I have made a decision. I think I have made, let me go with my favorite. My favorite, this one is from, um, from um, the Kiss Lash, and it's it's called Flirty. My favorite, favorite, favorite lash. So it looks very dramatic here, but when when I put it on, it looks very natural. It gives my eye because my eyes are small, so I try to go with lashes that is not too long and not too heavy looking. Yes, Kiss I Envy collection and the um, the the Feather Lash collection is absolutely amazing. So the worst thing that you can do as a woman, especially even if you're performing on stage, I don't like to see lashes that are too heavy on performers because what it happened, because you're performing, your music, your singing, say expression is all about your eyes. 
and eyelashes could help and too much eye makeup weigh your eye down and make your eyes look too heavy so it's important that and then when i apply the lash glue i use it uh on the edge like i just rim it here and you do your best not to get glue in between the hair of the lash because what's going to happen is after a while it's going to be difficult to get it out and it doesn't look natural anymore so and for the ladies who have challenges i i glasses challenges i say use make friends with a good magnifying mirror so i put on my entire makeup with a magnifier um mirror my makeup in its entirety goes on with a magnifying mirror and even when i'm working i use glasses that is probably a little bit more um magnified than a regular reading glasses because i want to see everything so i shake this out a little bit and it's important i will angle this because I've worn this before, so I know I don't have to trim it. So that I pull it all the way down and I make sure that it's it is stuck and there is no space in between. And when I apply the mascara before, it's only if like if I'm working on a client who has very long lashes, then when I'm done fixing it, I will use the spoolie brush and blend everything in and just fuse her natural lashes in so that way everybody is one big happy family and you don't have to worry about your natural lashes sticking out and there is absolutely no space between i don't know if you can see no space in between so and i i honestly believe that the best way to put on eyelashes is with your eyes open. And I wasn't always very good at this. I used to catch my ass, even as a makeup artist. It's a guy I saw one time, he was doing a demo and he recommended, he was applying the lash with the eyes open. So that way the, the extension framed the eyes very nicely. And everything looks so good. So with the eyes open too, there's no big set of shifting. You make sure the inner and the outer corner is set. So you see that? So there's two things that could happen here. I could pull this to make it more smoky by applying black on the inner on my waterline or I can make it a little bit more sexy by doing a nude on my waterline. And because my eyes are small, I will opt to do the nude as opposed to going with a black. If your eyes are fuller, then I recommend that you could go with a black on the inside of your waterline. The other thing is, if you have droopy eyes, ensure that you're angling your shadow in such a way it don't come over edge of the outer corner of your eyes because colors can shape the eyes as well as make it look more droopy or more sleepy or all that stuff so though and then the other thing too when um, they're doing this whole cut crease thing they most people don't understand it because um shadows dark shadows light shadows create illusions of different angles so most of the times when they choose to do a, a um a cut crease they cut in the crease in such a way that when you finish everybody eyes up in the air like poker hunters so understand your eye shape mess around with how different things would look but understand what i told you in terms of like if you're gonna pull your eyes down pull the color down it will make your eyes look down if your eyelids are droopy if you have hooded eyes you need to learn how to do your eyes in such a way that it always looks open so I'm gonna go in with the um, the nude on the inside, but I'm gonna keep it more on the inner to the middle because I want the outer corner to have that kind of sultry finish. 
right? So what it does, it opens up this side of the eyes and it keeps over here. Because remember, I told you about the illusion of light and dark combination creates illusion. So let's go across on the other side real quick. I don't know how I'm doing for time. Is there any questions? Is there any? Um, ooh, 630. Yeah. All right. So let's do this side real quick. I am going to do a different type of smoky eye because I'm going to go with a different style. What I will do is I'm going to start with the lighter color first. Right? So we're going to start with a lighter color and I'm going to, I'm using a flat brush. But because of um, the area that I want to keep light, I would not be able to get up in there with my finger to do what I want to do. So I'm not going to even attempt. So the first, the first third in the corner over the iris is where the light color is going to go. And then I will go in with another brush that has a little more depth in it and we're doing an angle so I'm going to angle this brush like so and I'm just going to keep patting it so this is a different kind of smoky eye But all of it will do the same thing, which is to really pop your eyes and make it look sexy and mask. Two different eye shapes. Now that I got my shape down, I can now work on applying the intensity. And we will go underneath as well. And for the woman who has hooded eyes, what we will do is we'll always angle the color in such a way that it goes in. So if your skin comes all the way out here, you wouldn't put any color here. So I'm going to just do it in such a way that I'm pretending that my eyes is hooded. We're going to deal with that afterwards. So I'm going over the black one time as I'm here. And I'm going to get it as close to my lash line as possible. You guys are seeing? And where I've placed the lightest shade. I come down as close between my lash line as possible because I don't want to have any darkness here. I want this area to be open so that I could bring more light in. So that's the technical part of makeup that most people don't tell you. You have to sign up for class so that I can go in and all these nice little details that you wouldn't know ordinarily because the average makeup person on Instagram don't go into all these details. Now I have this beautiful liner from Sasha. It's called, um, I'm gonna get my glasses and read it just now, but what I love about it is the tip of the point. And just to define this wing a little bit more, so this is like a wing smoky eye. I'm gonna come in and do my lid. I'm really putting this down here too with the intention of making sure that when I come in with my lashes, I don't have any issues. So for the woman who 
still learning to master the art of applying eyelash extensions. Don't worry about it. It's, there's hope for us. Just make sure the little tip that I just gave you, you utilize it in terms of like making sure that your lash line is lined and uh, you apply a proper coat of mascara so that there is no space between your lashes. So what I'm doing now is the same medium kind of warm brown that I use between the arch and the brow. That is what I'm using here over here now. And I'm smudging it slightly up because I can with the the uh, uh, blah, blah, with the shape of how I apply the product, it will create a more open eye. Because if you could see how open my eyes is already on the side, because instead of bringing it down, I'm taking it slightly up and around. So I have all of this here. This is a demonstration of the light colors bring forward, the dark colors recede. So the inner corner, the lighter it, it's kept, the more open the eyes will be. And I'm also, in terms of the texture that I'm using, it's a texture that is a little bit, um, it's a little bit, it's not fully metallic and it's not, it's in between metallic and satin. So it will pick up light differently from, from a matte color. Great, so we could be done with that and then I'm going to go to my, my brows and I'm going to try to recreate the same thing that I did on that side. Let me just make it add a little bit more depth but right here. The whole idea and then I'm going to pick up a very clean brush that has no practice product in it and this will be like my blending brush to fuse and soften up the lines so the same color that I have on the upper lid I'm going to put some of that on the bottom I can't hear you guys. What's going on? How are you guys um, shaping up for the holidays? Anybody celebrating Christmas? What are your plans? How are you navigating the reopening? And you know, get them back into business and all that stuff. Hold that way. All right, so let me do my eyebrows, and we will do the same thing more or less. So you can see how sparse the brow is. Um, I have some spaces in between. So what I usually do is create a shape first and then I fill them in. I want to use this because of how dark my eyes are. I am going in with a pencil that is a warm, warmer shade of brown. It's all about creating balance because one of the things that you don't want to do is have your eyebrows. Your eyes are dark and then you're going to go with dark eyebrows, dark eyes, dark eyebrows, and nobody could see the rest of your face. So choose one or the other. It's either you're going to do dark, dark brows and a light up um, eye or you do a, um, a deep, dark, intense eye and keep the brow as light as possible. Generally, the lighter the brown that you use on your eyebrows is the more feminine and the softer that you would come across as well. So I'm doing the top. 
And instead of drawing one straight line, I'm trying my best to just basically just sweep it in. Soft feathered strokes and you create an illusion of applying short hairs. And now this, this other pencil is a little bit deeper, but it's still a warmer brown. And I'm just going to go in in between and just swipe to get some shade. The one thing that you don't want to do is, like for example, a lot of people, you have very thin eyebrows, but then you want to create this whole big question mark situation. That is a no-no. Remember, we're going for as natural as possible. You don't want to create um, illusion of fakeness. So the softer everything is, is the better. If you want a little bit, there's nothing wrong with going a little bit more over what you already have, right? But the whole point is to not to make it so dramatic that it really does make you look fake. A woman's makeup should never walk before her. When you walk into a room, people must notice, oh wow, she's so gorgeous, as opposed to, oh my God, look how much makeup she have on. And for me personally, the best compliment that I get from my clients is when somebody, when they, they go to an event and they come back and they say, oh my gosh, I had so many compliments. Now, so remember, let's go back to the eye thing. I could even make this a little bit deeper. So what I'm going to do is just, before I apply the eyelashes, I'm going to go in with that black that I use on the other side. I'm going to create some depth. And I want to bring something to your attention. So we're going in with the black right here. You see? I'm particularly using this angle brush because I want to create that nice wing smoky vibe finish. I'm not going back in. So it's important. It's like applying makeup is just what I tell my clients when I'm teaching them. Picture when you are at school and you have to shit, um, you have to color. Stay within the line. So the line for me right now is my. And you notice how I am switching the angle of the brush when I want to get like so. I switch the pointier part this way and when I want to enhance the wing I switch it the other way so these are little tips and I'm not going all the way up in there because I don't if I only touch that it's going to be too much to have to blend out so up there already blended I just want to create a little bit more depth and I'm just sneaking it in here and you remember I'm just staying within the outer third so it's like you know bam now i'm going to do this so that you can see this eyelash is what is on here it's nice and full as well but this is what i'm going to use on the other side you notice the, how it's shorter on the inside it's shorter on the inside and it has a wing come out to the end my light is kind of like right above here so you're not see so you see the, the shape so when I applied a, this particular lash, because of how I did this side of my eyes, is a wing smoke. I mean, yes, I could use this, but if I want to enhance the wing, I'm going to use this lash that has the already winged out kind of thing. So I need to get my glasses to see how to put this stuff on. So you get a treat for two in one i hope you are sharing this with a friend um you haven't really asked me many questions or made any oh freak. i cannot pull this a little too hard but anyways you could oh, okay this is interesting this particular lash is ardell fox mink but it didn't fit a shit. I mind this one again for sure. Because if it can if it can't rally out my um because the other lash, you know how much times I pull that and wash that and take off the glue? 
a little pull too hard and this was already ready to fall apart in my hand. So this is definitely just a one. This one was more expensive. This just don't even make any sense. So I'm doing the same thing, which is to make sure that the glue is on the lash brand of itself. Man, I don't want you to inwardly digest me, remember? I need I need some energy from you. <laughs> That's a good one, Gloria. You inwardly digesting my expertise. I'm doing good with the notes, but done it with you, but have nobody to take pictures to send. So another time. Oh, you got to learn how to take your own pictures. So everybody understand everything I shared and since you're not asking questions. One of these days, you're not paying me to ask questions. <laughs> oh, that's some. One of these days, you're gonna pay me to ask questions. So now you're getting me complimentary. Don't waste it because this is a luxury. I can tell you it's a luxury. When God answer my prayer, I think if when God answers my prayer, definitely gonna this this stuff ain't gonna be even out there free again. <laughs> That's my wish, and I always get my wish. So let's do this. So I'm gonna hover over to make sure that I get it out. Measure it real good. I don't. This is supposed to be Fox Mink or whatever the hell. But I honestly, I'm not a fan. I probably should have cut it a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. And my, what I love about the way how I apply this stuff is I don't need to go back on top there to put, um, you know, some people put the, the liquid eyeliner after. I don't need to do that again. Because the way how you line your eyes will determine whether your eyes will look small or whether they look nice and big. So this is basically it. And I guess today is a hot day because I'm not a sweater and I'm feeling very warm. So what I need to do now is just apply some mascara. So you guys tell me what you think. This is my two, my contribution to you all for the holidays. I'm not going to bother with the rest of my face. But to me, I know the holiday thing is to rock a red. But if you can get the, um, the lips. Oh, I promised to show you how to stain. I forget. Let me show you how to stain and then I'm going to be out of here. But thank you, thank you guys for staying with me. I really appreciate your time. On Instagram, if you have any questions, you could, um, when I repose the thing, because the live comments disappear. What I'm doing is um, doing the bottom, my bottom lash. Because it really does help to pop my eyes. Oh, I think it's because no, it's warm. I was thinking because I have my hair down. So um I think it was Erla who asked, What if I'm a sweater? And right now I'm a sweater because I am sweating. So when you're a sweater and you're doing your makeup, what I suggest is don't touch it. Just go stand in front of a fan, or if you are in, in air condition, stand as close to the air condition and let the natural air dry off the sweat. So that if you decide to pat, depend on the texture of the product that you're using, sometimes um, the texture of the product is um, not waterproof. And when you try to mop it what will happen is you end up with these big blotches and it's going to be very very difficult to fix so i love mascara i don't know if you guys know that by now but mascara is one of my favorites 
And like I said earlier, because my eyes are small and I want to keep keep it nice and big. Okay, so I have another little trick that I use. This is a highlighting powder. And what I will do with this highlighting powder is like right to this area here. You remember I told you about light and how light bounces. You see what that does? And of course, you make sure that you blend it really well because everything that you use should really just look like it's a part of you. Nobody should be jumping out and saying, hello, hi. So, and I could use the same highlighting powder on the top and the bottom here. And this really does look sexy, like very sexy, especially if you are out to dinner and the candle light on the table and the way how it will bounce and reflect. So this is what this is all about. Shoot, I forget to do the other one. Probably. So one more um, tip to share is how to stain your lips. And this trick is as old as the book. I learned this when I started doing makeup with Jean. Um, hold on, um, hold on, Maria. I'll see you in a minute. So this is what pulls it together. I use the more silkier semi-matte in my brow. You really do want to stay away from highly pigmented shadows in your brow bone area because it honestly don't, when it photographs, it has that nasty pop back. Great. So yeah, let me see. What is my favorite mascara? I don't think I have a favorite favorite yet. I used to like the um, the volumizing um, from, from, from Black Up. They had a vibrating volumizing mascara that was really gonna tell you two coats on your eyelash because my eyelashes are really really short and thin so this one i find is very good the falsy is lash lift from um from maybelline this one is good and i also discover one from um because i experiment with mascaras a lot i use this one that has no formula in it yes this came with the package and this to me this re this is really good it's not irrit 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 irritable to the eyes or anything like that because and also what i noticed it is um it's also waterproof because the pen, I could go take a shower and I could get away with, or I could go I mean, clean around my eyes and stuff. I could go to sleep with it. And then next day I could just um, maybe probably because of how I sleep, I might have to touch up the corners, but I could keep it off like a day or two with this particular group. So for the stained lips, I'm going to go with a red. And what you will need for this is, um, some translucent powder and tissue. So it's just a matter of, and I use my fingers a lot. I don't want to take it all the way up. I'm gonna just leave it like on my lips like I suck a lollipop. So what I'm going to do now is get a tin piece of tissue so this is even so you see it's still kind of nice and soft and i'm going to use the tissue and i'm going to blot it i could blot and i could reapply i'm going to go in with one that is a little bit deeper just to kind of create a little bit of i had on um i had on a moisturize on my lips earlier so that's why i will have to do a little bit more so what i would suggest is when you put on your moisturizer blend it off a little bit first so blot again 
And one of the tricks that I had learned with Jean is the regular two ply tissue. You can um, pull out the pull out one ply, put it over the lips, and use a small brush and then put the powder over it. But I don't have any two ply um, napkins close to me. So this is a neutral powder that I'm using here. So just to give you a thing, it will have the thin thing and you just do this. But because it's thin, it will actually work. But this one is not thin. And always, you see, you see red lipstick is the hardest lipstick to work with. Make sure because it could look really nasty if you get it around too much. And I will show you how awesome this is. Let me just put, because you know me, I want a little bit more depth. So I'm going to just put it in the middle. Remember we're doing this in such a way that when you take off your mask, you shouldn't have a big mess. Here's that powder again. Instead of going with the brush, I directly apply it. So we have a stain. We have some color on the lips. And we're good to go. And this should do. Let me see. After you blot about two or three times, there'll be nothing on the tissue. So this is it. Let me find a clean spot. So this is a clean spot right here. See nothing. So it works. So that's how you stain your lips. So basically, that is about it. Let me see what um, Marie says. Yes, when you when um, it works best when your lips are dry. No lip licking first. Matt has a formula that I love. The powder kiss. It gives the full color of matte, but the moisturizer. Of a creamy formula it puts it stays on and it will be great as a stain okay i will definitely check it out i haven't been experimenting a lot so uh, my friend who's also a makeup artist um, she's based in texas she says mac has a formula that's called powder kiss i think i remember seeing the review about this it's a creamy moisturizer it's it's um and it has a it's, a, it's matte but it has a creamy texture so it's it moisturizes the lip so yes, yeah, so um, um, Abby, you could go back and look at this. So it's two smoky eyes I did. So this is a smoky eye. This is a wing smoky eye over here. And then this one is a full glass smoky eye. But of course, everything is done to complement my facial shape, my eye shape. So my tips are, in regards to learning, is um, these are my tips I'm going to review again. The first step is to make sure that your foundation, your complexion products are the same as your complexion in terms of your, especially on the tone. If you have a, if you have red on the tones and you're going to choose a product that has yellow on the tones, it's not going to work well for you. Also, um, I know it's a thing with some makeup artists. They, I don't know who taught them this or where they learn it from. You could wear a darker foundation and a lighter powder that should don't fly. Um, because what happens is if your foundation, if your powder does not complement your foundation, it changes the whole color. When you photograph it now, it comes out ashy or you have a big white um, situation going on around your eyes. So the key, the key thing to note is like, especially when I started working with international makeup artists, my first um, masterclass I took was with... Um, Manifa Mortis. That was my first master class. And the one thing that I learned from her is the more natural you, the least amount of product you, you use is the more natural and it's the longer it stays, right? Um, when you gonna apply foundation, that's why I always say make sure that your skin is in a in good condition. Invest in a good skincare line, be consistent with it. And when you come to use a foundation of complexion, perhaps it means you'll use less. I've also learned to apply 
the least amount of product on my clients to get a flaw flawless complexion even if you have max it, it's all in your application technique so one of the things that i would say is stop beating the product into your skin there is no need to beat the foundation in right so this if i if i was going to finish up my face i'm just going to do this well put them on this side for you. this is a cc cream right and i will do this First of all, notice how the product blends right into my skin. It gives me a nice flawless finish. So I look like skin rather than product. Well, I'm getting it all the way and I'm blending it here. So even with my neck, it looks really good. And I'm going to do something on the other side so that you can see it's all about your application technique. A lot of people apply too much product. They use the amount of product that they use could probably do them for, the, for two weeks straight in one go. You use the amount of product in one go that you can use in two weeks, right? So here's the other mistake that a lot of, um, that is made often when you're applying foundation, you do this. So you put all that, that little product went all here. But you will do just this, this spot and then you will pat, 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 like literally beat the product into your skin. So what will happen there is you will end up with a masked finish instead of creating the illusion of flawless skin. So we don't want that. So if you learn anything else, when I see you guys out on the road, if you, if you sat here with me, when I see you on the street, I want to see the demonstration that you took this complimentary masterclass, because I don't say free, nothing is free. This is a complimentary masterclass for you guys being here every week with me for the last year. I really appreciate that. So look at this. See? And ha I haven't put powder on as yet. Everything looks like skin. So if I want to, when it comes to my highlighting product, I totally, I don't want to use the word heat. Oh, I think I promised somebody one more thing. I don't like to use the word heat. So this is my satin finish. Um, it's called a sublime powder. I, I like radiance. I'm a big, big fan of radiance. I'm gonna put some of this here and I'm gonna show you the difference between this texture of radiance and the other one that is highly pigmented. And the other thing that I will do instead of, remember I said, you don't have to do contouring like how um, to use like a darker shade and then a, a, a thing. You can use your blush to shape your face. Now, if you can see, I already have a little, my natural contouring going on. So my face already have that depth. And when I use the highlighting product, that automatically gives the illusion of a higher cheekbone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down here. This is a matte bronzer and it's a very warm tone. So when I use it, it's a little bit deeper than the deeper part of my skin. So this helps to shape my face so this is my blush this is my contour in one so i want you to understand that you don't have to use 40 million products to do the same thing once you come in and you take a little session with me bring your products and i will show you exactly what to do with it so you can see how i already kind of snatched my face right so oh the pigmented the highly pigmented product what this this is a big no-no because of how warm our climate is and when you use product that is too highly pigmented what you end up getting the result looks you look greasy so there's a huge difference between looking dewy and radiant and looking greasy. And to me, what I when I use in this one, 
on myself. I'm just going to use this so I could show you exactly what it what it looks like. When I'm going to use this, I use it underneath my product. So in the wrong in the right in the wrong lighting situation, this would definitely come easy because I wouldn't use this on somebody who is doing um like television, for example, because in person it looks nice and radiant but on camera under the lights it will definitely read greasy and we don't want greasy so if i'm going to use this at, at all to to, to um to kind of get radiance out of it i will use it on it i would have used it first on my skin and then put my foundation and my other complexion products over it so basically this is it to show you two different sides one that has the highly pigmented um, highlighter and the other one that have the softer pigmented lighter. So I don't know about you, especially on my um on the Instagram, it looked wet. So basically, this is it. I've been I've been here for oh, snaps an hour and thirty three minutes. I don't understand why people insist on purchasing complexion for an eye. Exactly. I don't know why either, because guess what? Um, that's what I do. So Gloria, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your most valuable asset with me. Um, we could get back a thousand dollars anytime, but time spent can never be regained. So I trust that the uh, 134 minutes that I've spent with you guys has been worth your while or have been worth your while. I'm still getting my grandma down. So don't um don't eat me up for that. Um I really appreciate that you share your time with me. Um thank you, um but Scotch Chick. I appreciate I love this. I, I always tell you I love your nickname, but a scotch. So when somebody called the other day to come in and call me yellow woman, say I'm not yellow, I'm butterscotch. And I always think about you, Marie. So Marie, thank you for sharing your, a little bit of your time for sneaking in and out. So um, hey Denise. Denise, you'll definitely have to catch the replay. I try my best to explain it and go as slow as possible. So thanks again for tagging all your friends. Thank you, Abigail, for being here. And go ahead and share, share, share. I appreciate all of you. So thanks again. So I'm going to leave you with my favorite girls. Um, beautiful chorus. Um, this is just so absolutely relaxing. And I love the message that it sends. Um, so on the days when you are low, just go to YouTube and pull up um, beautiful chorus and vibes with them. So love, light, and blessings. I will see you next week. I want you to have a really amazing um, rest of the night. Have a peaceful rest. And also, please remember that you're awesome. Yeah. Thank you.